Hi. We're going on a road trip. Go for a We are in Kamloops now and Kira's <laughs> getting restless. We're two hours in, two more hours to go. Ready to go? We're heading out at about 7 a.m. It's the end of March and the snow's completely gone in Kelowna, so we are taking a road trip north. We're going to try and find some waterfalls, this giant waterfall, it's called Hemken Falls. It's in Wellsgrave Provincial Park. Night temperatures are looking to be about negative 10 degrees. We're gonna have chicken fajitas for dinner and we're having ourselves a weekend, so let's go. Roads are getting snowier and less populated, constantly looking for pull-offs and rest centers where we can possibly sleep tonight. We're getting close and I'm getting hungry. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Okay, we're walking along the gorge. And the snow is pretty compact, but if you go ever so slightly off the trail. Oh! <laughs> it's almost three feet deep. Wow, it is gorgeous in here. So we're in the parking lot and it's so busy here, so, well, by so busy I mean there's like six cars, six different group of people, but we're gonna go try and find an empty parking lot to cook dinner at and then come back here for sunset. Snack until we can find a parking lot. It's cold, we need more layers. First bite, that's bomb. This entire time, I've been on constant lookout for any animals. Cougars, bears.
solo car camping is so easy and you don't need a lot of stuff i do have a trip planned driving down from bc to the sawtooth mountains in idaho so I wanted to learn what I needed, what I didn't need, what wasn't a necessity. You really can do it with almost nothing, but adding an extra slide out table was something I learned that I would like. So I have one of these Rubbermaid sliding bins. It's meant for underneath your bed and it only takes up about half of the length of the back. I have my Reflectix here. That's for the front windshield cover. My garbage that I'll throw out. Make sure it's double bagged. So everything is on. It's a queen size four inch memory foam. I'll link it below. It is the same length as when I ordered it, but I cut down the width to fit. So this is the side that I'll be sleeping on. When I'm stopping at certain places, this kind of blocks Kiro in so he can't jump out the back. This is his own bag here. I have two of his jackets because it is winter still and his own sitting mat, but we don't always use that. We usually just put a blanket down and his own water bottle that stays in here. And then within that bag, insulated cooler. And that's where I keep all his food. Much his secret, extra long rope. So when we're ready to go to bed, I'll put this up here. I'll roll out my two sleeping bags. I have a negative 18 degree sleeping bag and an extra one. Usually Kiro uses one of them. I sleep on the right side. So in my kitchen bucket, I have my Coleman two burner stove, propane, camp mug, some extra cloths. I have my stainless steel pan that I clearly forgot some extra scrubby. So I need to master my pot spraying. I think getting some distilled vinegar and watering it down in a spray bottle and spraying it and then having a little strainer to catch any food residue um, and bringing a good scrub cloth. So that's definitely on my list for next time. This is Kira's little spot here. I can access the other side of the Rubbermaid. And this is where I keep my dry goods. So I have some bread, any snacks, easy access at night. Time. Seasonings in there. So I can really fit a lot more, any extra duct tape. And then I keep this, an extra blanket over it because Kira likes to use it as a little headrest. But he's got all this space and he'll usually curl up. Um, but underneath here fits a igloo cooler. You can just stay there. You can fit a lot in this cooler. Right now I'm actually using it to keep my food from freezing. But in the summer I will keep frozen water bottles in there. So like I said, this is the length of a full size queen. I've kept my chairs in. And you do actually want stuff behind your seats so that it can keep this part of your head up and it gives you extra room. I have my twinkle lights and the nets that go over my window so I can keep them cracked a little bit in the summer. This is my side. I have my pillow in the full length of the car. And then underneath here, I have a Rubbermaid bin that has all of my gear, my day pack, my camp chair, sit pad, bear spray. This koozie here is made from recycled jackets. It's from this company called Hot Puck. And I've put my bear spray in it and it's essentially like having it its own down jacket. So hopefully it stays safe in there in the winter. And in the front, this is where I keep my clothes. Having one of these, this is an Eddie Bauer bag. It was really affordable. And I love having it in this type of bag versus a backpack because you can dig into it and see everything versus having a backpack still open. This is the blanket that we'll sit on and it has this kind of water resistant material. You can find them anywhere. So my hiking boots are up here in this heat buddy. You can attach a propane tank to this. And if we're sitting outside in the winter, it keeps us warm. That's it, there's really not a lot. So that's pretty much it. It's a beautiful day. We're gonna go try and catch sunset at the waterfalls. 
and go for a little hike. At nighttime, everything is in the car, which was really important to me car camping solo. If I do need to peel out really quick, I'm not going to have to worry about leaving anything behind or get in my way for crawling into the front driver's seat and always know where your keys are. Sun is shining. It's golden hour. Wow. We're in a forest park, kind of beyond where the waterfall is, where not a lot of people go. So I have my bear spray in my koozie. I'm ready to hike. Monday is the first day of spring, so I'm fully prepared in case any black bears come looking for food. I'm going to get a little snack out while we wait for sunset. I think I'll do cashews and dessert. Okay, there you go, Kyo. Searching for a new spot to sleep. I couldn't sleep at the spot that we cooked at because it was a dead end road and it was only wide enough for one car. The snow banks were too high. So ultimately it wasn't safe. Um, one of my safety rules is to always, oh, we're going over a bridge. One of my safety rules is to always reverse park so that if something ever did happen, hopefully it never does, you could get away and drive off, but we would have been cornered at that point. Okay, this is where we're crashing tonight. Does that work with you? These slippers keep my feet so warm. I p keep them on inside my sleeping bag. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you think we should keep making content like this. We're still going to be adventuring anyways, so I love sharing it with you guys. And we'll see you next week. Bye!